What up, y'all? Gonna go on a little mission today. We gotta talk about a few things. All right, y'all. So today, we are gonna be talking about some shit I don't really even wanna talk about. But I have to step up for my client, and I also have to step up for myself. So October uh, 2022, we had a high profile customer have an engine failure. It was a blown head gasket. And uh, we had sent the engine back to the shop that built it. And they deflected blame to pointing to too much heat, too much detonation, and so on and so forth. They had pointed at some bearing wiping being a uh, obvious, obvious indicator of detonation, which is, we're gonna get into that in a minute. Uh, everything sent back and we had somebody else look at it. And we're gonna go over some more objective things from a more objective point of view. So this car, it was a 370Z Nismo. I had tuned it in 2020 when it was just a stock motor with a 64 millimeter turbo. It was a very quick, very fast street car. It has a lot of racing under its belt in the stock block form and did really well for this customer. Damn, he got him. 136. Holy fuck. Oh, he went 137. The vet did. Leave it 
it at 850 or so until we make some changes to the combo. Okay, no problem. So the car sits for a while, turns it back on after about 30 minutes, and then it just starts puking coolant out of the exhaust. He tops the, he tops the coolant off and drives it back home. So he's driving it home from the dyno with a blown head gasket. It's about an hour and a half drive. So he takes it out, takes the motor out, sends it back to this place. The problem with tuning a high horsepower setup in general is there's always going to be some kind of finger pointing or some bullshit going on when there's a failure. You try to be as objective as possible. From a tuning standpoint, all precautions are taken, you know. When we got the engine back, we had somebody else look at it and actually measure everything out. This is kind of where I'm going to get into how internal combustion actually works. So pre-ignition and pre-detonation is basically cylinder pressure spikes where you have combustion before the spark plug lights, before the uh, coil lights the plug. That happens, the pistons are the first line of defense, basically, uh, what you're gonna see when you try to do a failure analysis on it. So you're gonna see in this teardown that the actual pistons themselves have no evidence of detonation. They don't have any evidence of damage. So usually when you run the when you run a little bit hotter of a tune than you need to, you turn the engine down and you'll see micro welding on the piston. Or if the engine just straight up fails due to detonation, you're gonna see damage to the ring lands and you're gonna see like stippling on the uh, crown of the piston towards the edge. So these things, or this will only happen on most or all cylinders if it's an actual tuning issue because the ECU is firing all six coils the same, at the same amount of ignition fans. If you only have it on one or two cylinders, then you do have a mechanical problem still um, with detonation, but it's a mechanical issue. So I need to clarify that first. You are looking for a failure point and your pistons and your ring lands look normal, they look good, they look like just normal signs of wear then you don't have a detonation problem. You don't have a problem with excess heat. You don't have, basically detonation is your actual, is your end issue, but the root cause of that could come from multiple things. But when this engine was torn down, which you'll see, there was no actual signs of detonation on the pistons themselves, right? So let's go to the bearings then. Well, the rod bearings on the rod side on the crank side, excuse me, had evidence of wiping. Basically the crank is touching the bearing. Now, this is pretty damning, right? And if you go online and you say you're a shop and you say it's detonation and the tuner did it, people are gonna be pre predisposed to believe you, right? There's a problem with this because we measured the bearings. Now, when you have detonation on the bearings, you have those cylinder pressure spikes on the bearings. Basically, the cylinder pressure spikes are punching the pistons and forcing them down when the piston's trying to go up. Your bearing's gonna compress. Now, when your bearing compresses, you have a middle layer to the bearing that actually pushes out. So, none of this happened on this motor. So that means that this bearing damage was probably from an oiling issue that was a pre-existing oiling issue, or it was an issue from the engine ingesting coolant for over an hour of driving. Now, coolant doesn't compress at all. Once you get coolant in the combustion chamber, it's gonna push against the piston to try to push the rod down. And if anybody here that's watching this has ever hydro-locked an engine, and driving it into water, like big puddles, shit like that, a lot of the times, you'll get enough water in to where you bend a couple of connecting rods. The actual bearing damage wasn't from detonation. It was from the engine ingesting coolant and coolant not being compressed or not being compressible. We actually had all the bearings measured. Some of the variance in, in measurements was within two ten thousandths of an inch. This is an extremely small variation between the bearings. Also have seen multiple 
assembly issues with the engine that we were shown with sealant, RTV type sealant in the actual grooves of the receiver groove of the, uh, of the engine block. Head gasket itself not fitting around the cylinder bore correctly. We saw issues with the lines in the cylinder bores. Now the technician at the shop tried saying it was from E85, but I'm not really sure what his point was. Like we ran the car too rich or what? Because the air fuel on all of our hits, about 11.6, 11.7 air fuel on every pull. It was debunked pretty quickly. The uh, actual, the actual issue with that was assembling the engine dirty. So, not sure why they brought that up. It's kind of a moot point for me. Also, if it, if it does get to put put together slightly dirty and it works, like. I mean, nobody's gonna care. If it works, it works, right? The actual head gasket surface was hanging over the cylinder bore on a couple of the cylinders, ones that actually had uh, coolant in them. So it definitely seems like there's more here than meets the eye. All of the topics that they had touched on regarding inlet air temp, timing, boost pressure, heat, exhaust back pressure, all of those types of things. These are all things that on a teardown you would see on the pistons. If you talk about detonation and pre-ignition, the pistons will tell you. The pistons will snitch on you 100% of the time. You know, can you lift the head on a bulletproof motor? Yes, you can. Can you lift the head from detonation? Yes, you can, absolutely. Can you lift the head from a shitty tune? Yes, you can, 100%. But what happens when the head lifts and there's no signs of detonation on the pistons? One, the last thing I'm gonna leave you guys with is this particular head gasket design. The manufacturer of this head gasket requires the head gasket to be retorqued after the car's been ran at operating temp. We were told that this is not a requirement. We were told that this has never needed to be done and the manufacturer of the head gasket and the manufacturer of the hoop system all told us that it was a requirement. So we're dealing with a motor that lifted the head on it with a head gasket that wasn't retorqued and the, the blame was pointed somewhere else. The actual full documentation, an unbiased source explaining the entire breakdown of, uh, of this engine. Okay, first things first, we we're going to talk about bearing wear. Number one thing that was brought up was detonation, pre-detonation, right? So, what they're claiming as the detonation here is this mark, the shiny bit here. And if you take this away, you're looking at this shiny bit here. This is on the rod side. So, this goes, uh, this would be this side of the rod okay so there's a couple things you can look at on there the first thing that i don't like is we've got striping across the entire bearing top and bottom yes you have more wear on this middle spot here but i don't believe that's from detonation i believe that is from the fact that it was chugging coolant after it was uh, removed from the dyno and so we're trying to compress something that is not compressible on something that already is 12 to 1 compression right so huge combustion chamber pressures after the head gasket was lifted because you have water that is not compressible right the reason why i don't believe this is detonation is a couple things one when you see a motor that has been detonated on the dyno, especially something that makes close to four digits, has been detonated on the dyno, you see a few things. Number one, I brought this out from another relatively high boost application that was being detonated. If you can see in here, I'm gonna have to do a little peeking behind the camera here. On this rod, you can see that we have a gap on the sides. That is because this bearing is no longer tight in this uh, rod. 
because it has actually been collapsed in like this on these outsides from being smacked right here too many times. Okay, so <clears throat> on a full power pull, you start detonating. It does not take all that long to do that. The things that come a little bit later are too much detonation begins to flutter the rings. Okay, so when I look at this, this one, you know, has some movement on the ring, but even this one is not that bad, right? The other thing that we would look at is the rod bushing on the small side here. If the bushing is smashed out on the bottom side of the pin, opposite from the top of the piston, if it's smashed out there, that's another sign of huge amounts of detonation. That's the stuff that we look for that is not necessarily obviously apparent to everyone. The obviously apparent signs of detonation is piston marring, right? I do not have a good example of that here. We're talking about little chunks that look like they're breaking off of the piston, um, melting of the piston towards the sides, any spot where you have a sharp edge typically will have some type of deformation if you're pre-detonating uh, because the heat and pressure is too much, right? So these are the two pistons out of uh, this VQ37 VHR, uh, 12 to one compression. Here's what I see, but let's look at this one that hasn't been cleaned. This piston has a ton of sharp edges on it, a ton. I mean, it has every sharp edge that you would typically want to uh, avoid for something that's going to be in a high boost application with detonation uh, being a possibility and none of them are deformed. Not a single one of them is missing. We have no chunks coming off. We have no spotting almost where it looks like uh, it's, it's uh, been impacted by anything. You have none of that. Okay. And this is uh, number six, by the way. All right, give me another look. This is the one that was clean out of the motor. So what are we gonna look at here? We're gonna look at, is that ring fluttered? I can't get it to move at all. It spins nice and tight in this groove. I have no problems with that, or the second one, or the third, okay? We're gonna come in here. We're gonna look in that rod, right? That bushing is not squished out at the bottom. It's not smashed. Okay, the pin moves freely. No smash bushing. No problems there. So the other thing that you would be able to do is you'd be able to slide this in to this rod from the side with the cap on it because this would be compressed so much. And we can't do that. Huh? Kind of can. We can't get it fully in there. It's super tight still. Do you mind taking that and uh, removing that rod cap for me? So, <clears throat> a lot of this points to the consumption of coolant in the combustion chamber as opposed to detonation. Uh, when you look at the heads, you'll also see the same thing. Uh, we'll, we'll bring over the heads at a later point, but when you look at the heads, you see the same thing. There's no markings of detonation. Uh, one cylinder does have damage to a cylinder wall from consuming something, but there's no markings of detonation on the heads. Um, the head gasket doesn't show markings of detonation. And then the last thing is these cranks are very strong. A lot of guys making really, really big power on these cranks. And one of the first things I noticed was that the bearings had a sine wave pattern to the wear on the crank. So I'm actually gonna move the camera here in just a second after we look at this uh, rod. Again, this is your rod side. This is the side with the marking on it. So let's look, see if we can see through the sides. It's not smashed up. You 
can't just pull it out of there. You have to twist it around. Very common for rod bearings at this point. Okay. Um, the other thing that we did, took this rod and I measured here and here. And they are within two, ten, two, uh, ten thousandths of an inch, right? So zero, 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 one. If this is a oiling issue that could have been from after the engine began consuming coolant and then obviously if you have an oiling issue this this part of the rod is going to be the part of the rod that takes the most abuse because it's the side that is delivering the power down don't believe that this bearing wear is from the detonation so i'm gonna move this camera just a smidge so i can show you what i'm talking about on the crank bearings Obviously these are worse in the rear, but the thing that I noticed immediately was the sign of wear here. You can see the shiny bit, and then the sign of wear there that matches it. And then on this side, we're down, and then on the uh, block side, you have the opposite. So this crank was under a tremendous amount of stress, so it was actually making like a sine wave pattern, which is something we see when the combustion uh, pressures are extremely high from trying to compress something that is not really compressible. There's too many people running this crank at a high level for me to believe that this crank is just that wobbly, but that is another sign of something that I think you know, caused a lot more of the damage here than we're giving credit to. All right, this is cylinder head gaskets slash O-ring problems. Start with the gasket, and then we'll talk about uh, all the things that I believe were incorrect about the gasket, then we'll talk about the installation of the gasket, and then we'll talk about the retorquing of the head. So, in that order, so, on this motor that we're looking at today, we also are running a copper head gasket with a steel hoop in the head and an O-ring receiver groove in cut into the block, okay? Um, very good way to set up stuff for high boost. This head gasket exists on the motor like this, right? A couple things about a head gasket like this. One. The only thing that should be between the aluminum block and the steel hoop is the copper gasket, okay? So we have on this, you can see in the receiver groove, this uh, groove that goes here, in that groove, almost across the whole head, we have not really looking like a copper coat kind of, it's a silicone sealant of some type. And then the blue is, I believe, the helicopter sealant that I can't remember the name of right now. Both of which are in that groove, okay? So, really, you should, the only thing should be steel hoop on copper into the aluminum block. And that gives you your best case scenario of no leaking. One of the things that was told to me is that these motors do not get the head gaskets retorqued. The customer who just brought this to me to look at, to tell him if uh, I thought it was savable, asked me if this should be retorqued. And every copper gasket has to get retorqued. I don't care if it has an O-ring groove, I don't care how much sealant you use on it, they all have to get retorqued. After heat cycle, um, maybe honestly two heat cycles, you retorque it, okay? So, every company that makes these gaskets is going to have a specific instruction set, and the company that makes these gaskets or sent me the instruction set, and I can guarantee you 100% they want these retorqued after a heat cycle. Okay. 
So, there's two problems. Silicone in the O-ring groove was not retorqued. Third problem, which I think is bigger than, honestly, the other two. When you make these gaskets, you're, you're accounting for a smash, right? You, they have to be a certain amount of smash that you're accounting for. This gasket overhangs the cylinders uh, in different places on every cylinder, but up here, down here, not so much. But the last two cylinders on both sides overhang the most, and it is the worst offender at the overhang. Coincidentally, the last two cylinders, five and six, were also the ones that had the uh, coolant that get into the combustion chamber. So this is either the head lifted. My question was, and I have not put this crank in this block to know, but my thing that I mentioned was if this piston is sitting at zero deck, it's 100% going to hit this gasket. Not only that, this gasket is being exposed with a on three sides to the combustion chamber and all the violence that's happening in here. I don't think that there is anything you could have done that would have made this work. I think this oh this size needs to be addressed. The amount of smash needs to be addressed. Um, I think this would have been a problem no matter what, personally. You set the other side on, it's the same thing. System. Hold that. It's overhanging there, not overhanging on this side. Okay, and it gets worse the farther you go down. So, I don't think there's anything we could have done about that portion, and I think uh, eventually that would have been an issue, anyways. regardless of the sealant on the o-rings and the amount of switch <sighs> hoop in the head again sealant all around the hoop in the head now we're going to come over here and really have a close-up look at this sealant up to on both sides of the hoop, inside the chamber. This is the cylinder that has some damage to the cylinder wall. We also um, smashed into the head there a little bit. But again, if you're looking at these combustion chambers, if you're if you're excusing this one that has this damage from um, a piece of spark plug, I believe, is what the owner told me it was. There's no markings of detonation here. There's no chunking, there's no hot spots, there's no melting. And as for a third point uh, on the cylinder heads, I also think it is um, pretty ridiculous that we have stock exhaust valves in this. Intake valves I would also change, but it's pretty ridiculous that we have stock exhaust valves, to be perfectly honest. So one more thing I wanted to talk about, claims that were made against the lines in the cylinder walls. So let's look at what we're talking about here. We're talking about lines that have no texture, right? They are just dark markings. You can't feel them. They're just colorations, right? Part that I found funny is that they're claiming that this is E85. It's not, it's from putting the motor together dirty. You don't fully wipe out the cylinder walls Make sure that everything's nice and clean with like lint-free lint -free rags and alcohol and all that stuff before you oil the cylinders to put the new piston in with the ring compressor. It'll gather that dirt on the second ring 
and it'll drag it down as it's going down the cylinder wall, then this is what you end up with. Obviously, any line that you can feel is not from that, but any of these light markings that just are visual only, definitely not um, caused by E85 or anything else that's caused from putting it together dirty. So, This client is uh, going to be doing a giveaway on his Nismo 350Z. Check out his website. For more information, I put the link in the description below.